Hello, welcome to Agronomy for Future. This YouTube channel is linked to Agronomy for Future website. For more details, please visit agronomyforfuture.com. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Agronomy for Future. Today I'll explain how to calculate probability density function in Excel and R. For probability density function, you might know as a normal distribution graph. When we analyze data, sometimes we need to show normal distribution graphs. This graph is different from density graph. Normal distribution graphs explain various concepts which simple bar graphs cannot show. In Excel, we can easily draw this graph, but understanding the concept would be more important. Today, I'll explain what is probability density function, PDF, and how we can calculate in Excel and also in R. Here is one data. I measured 1,000 individual wheat grain weight of CV1 and CV2 genotype. Simply we can show the result as a bar graph after calculating average of grain weight, adding standard error. Now we see that average grain weight in CV1 is greater than in CV2, and that's it. We cannot know how CV1 is greater than CV2. However, if we calculate probability density function, we'll be able to see the distribution of grain weight, and it would tell more stories. First, let's draw a histogram graph. For example, select all grain weight data, B column in Excel, and choose histogram. Then, we can obtain this graph. Then if you draw a line to connect each bar, it would be like this. Now, I'd like to draw this line as a curve using a mathematical formula. We call this curve a normal distribution or Gaussian distribution, which is a type of continuous probability distribution. The main characteristics of normal distribution is, first, the shape of bell curve is symmetrical, and the probability is the greatest on the mean. Second, the area of the curve is 1. Third, when the curve becomes far from the mean, it'll be close to x-axis, but never reach to x-axis. That is, the probability never becomes zero. This is a formula of probability density function. It seems tricky, but actually it's so simple. X is each observational value. Mu is average. Sigma is standard deviation, and therefore sigma square is variance. Pi is pi value, which is 3.14159, etc. E is Euler's number. If we practice to calculate PDF by hand, you'll realize that it's a piece of cake. Let's calculate step by step according to the formula. Then, we can calculate PDF. We calculated probability density function. Now, we can draw a normal distribution graph. Let's set up GW column as x-axis and PDF column as y-axis. Then, select scatter graph. We drew a normal distribution graph about CV1. Luckily, Excel provides the function about this process. This is Excel function so we do not have to calculate by hand. Let's calculate PDF using this function. You can see the exactly same value as what we calculated. However, if you simply use the Excel function, you never understand the principle of PDF. That's why I explained how to calculate by hand. As the same process, we can calculate PDF about CV2. And let's compare two graphs. With the same data, we drew two different graphs. Both graphs show the mean of grain weight. But distribution graph will tell us more. It tells us how grain weight in CV1 is greater than CV2. In CV1, both small and large grains are greater than in CV2. Also, we can take out values from certain percentile and analyze and compare. Therefore, if data points are more than 30, I recommend to calculate probability density function and see the normal distribution graph. It will tell you more stories.
In Excel, sometimes, it seems not to follow the main characteristics of normal distribution. This is because Excel reflects the existing sample size. If sample size is not 1000, but 10,000, it shows more clear normal distribution. However, in R, we can avoid this problem using a specific code. First, I upload Excel file to R. Before uploading file, I rearrange data like this. Then, use the this code. You can copy and paste this code in agronomy for future.com. R provides the clear normal distribution graph. Although sample size is small, unlike Excel, R predicts the clear distribution. That's why I prefer to use R when analyzing data as PDF. Here is one more tip. We can add histogram and normal distribution graph by adding a simple code like this. Please visit agronomyforfuture.com and copy and paste the R codes I provided. And practice in your R console. Thank you.